freaking terrible. But we'll work hard to solve the format. Seven wins. And I'm sure we'll make it there. All right. Well, what is up, my friends? Welcome, Bronze to Mythic, Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Hold on to your butt. And uh, Bronze Tier 2 set looks really fun so far. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Check out the YouTube, of course. A video will go every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the YouTube channel uh, until we're done. Episode 2, right here, right now. And I'm uh, just going to hop in and get into our next draft because uh, we got drafts to do, folks. Pretty crazy looking set. Uh, a lot of cool things happening. Our first draft, our first draft was definitely a first draft. You know, it, whenever we do our, our first episode of Bronze Mythic, you always get a can get a feel like, okay, yeah, this is our first draft. We're we're not really sure what cards go you know, what cards go where. Uh, our deck is always kind of like, you know, functional but not very exciting. And uh, but that's, that's the fun though, right? We're gonna learn the format together. We're gonna learn all the cards together. Try out different things. The Black Red Descend deck didn't seem super great. Didn't seem. Uh, that easy to descend. Obviously, I'm sure our, our deck wasn't built particularly well. Uh, but one of the cool things with this format is there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of uh, cross synergy between different color uh, color pairs and archetypes, and a lot of cool things happening. So let's get right in and open up a Taran's Soul Cleaver. Interesting. Uh, one mana equipment, Creature's Vigilance. Whenever another artifact creature is put into the battlefield for the battlefield, put a counter on a equipped creature. So Kind of like a weird synergy uh, equipment rare here for like a sacrifice deck. Um, whenever another artifact creature is put into the graveyard from the battlefield. So it's any artifact creature. So your pawn stuff or your stuff. Uh, so we get map, treasure, sacrifices. Kind of an interesting card, honestly. So you get the soul cleaver. We also got uh, canonized in blood, which whatever. We got the necro sage, necro mage. Time to unleash a deadly fungus. Pretty cool fungus card. Uh, kind of a thin back, honestly, right? We've got uh, Wally Strike is pretty cool. Uh, Idol of a Deep King and Sunfire Torch Bolt Shock Effects. Well, let's take the rare. Let's just give it a spin. Soul Cleaver and uh, I don't know how's it going. Is it going to play out? How's it going to play out? I don't know, honestly. But we'll try it out and see how it spins because uh, that's what we do here on Bronze Mythic. We're trying out the format, trying to learn the format as a whole. And uh, I'm very happy to take the rare here and just try out... Uh, we're we'll gonna try it out, see how it goes. So, pack two, we see a rare Misty. We see the Spyglass Siren, a really awesome card. Just cheap, uh, cheap value, makes a map. One one flyer. Uh, oh, as you've got, you know, Ender of the Micro Tyrant. It's usually like, it's like, it's like a common, honestly. You know, just like the two, two, two for two with like a big, huge thing. We got uh, a Braid here. A Braid's pretty awesome. And then a bunch of green cards. Uh, Bristleback. Uh, it's probably just a Braid here. I guess Deadweight's really good too. Maybe we're a dead weight over a braid. I feel like the thing is that one of the important things to note is that like the colors that care about certain things, the Jeskai colors care about artifacts and the Sultai colors care about the graveyard and like sacrificing and stuff. So maybe we want to take dead weight over the soul cleaver. De dead weight will also, I don't know I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna take dead weight here. Um, I don't know if this is right or not. Obviously I have no idea. I'm just kind of like winging it based on instinct. Uh, but we get paid off immediately by hitting a Chupacabra echo. <laughs> Which is awesome. So, I uh, don't know about last pick was right, but we'll find out. I guess this is as the time goes on here. We see a rare missing and a common missing. And somehow Chupacabra Echo is still in the pack. This card seems excellent. We're going to 4 3 2 with Fathomless Descent, uh, which means that it just counts the permanent cards in graveyards. It can kill things, which is super cool as well. And uh, what else we got here? We got Twist and Turns, kind of a weird explore payoff. Uh, Snail's cool, Rock Slide's cool. But yeah, this is a pretty easy echo. This is a huge signal for an excellent uh, uncommon here. Uh, third pick with a common missing. So take the echo. Now we got Black Card, Black Card, Soul Cleaver. And again, different artifact creatures. Put a battle right, so we want things to die. Our opponent's stuff can die. Our stuff can die. But as long as these things are dying, we're pretty happy. So moving on to pack three. We got some white cards here. We got Petrify, which is a pretty good pacifism variant. We've got the Cloud Guard, which is a pretty good flyer. Makes a little bit of a material also. We have the War Scribe. Pretty cool, uh, pretty cool like, go wide effect. You just play this thing, pump your whole team. Kind of sweet. We've got a, a Draft. Uh, an Idol of a Deep King. Um, honestly, no idea to take here. I feel like the War Scribe's pretty sweet, but not necessarily going to be super exciting for what we're... I don't even know, honestly. Kind of want the Cloud Guard. Kind of want the War Scribe. Um, Petrify seems super safe, but like not as exciting. 
I'll just take the War Scribe. Black and white has a lot of like kind of tokeny stuff going on. Uh, black has the fungus tokens, and white has the uh, white has the gnome tokens. So let's try this out. We got past a pack with a bunch of blue cards in it. Kind of a weird discover counter spell. Wow. What a totally amazing, excellent discover. And we got the minus two, minus two effects. We got the marionette. Kind of a thin pack. I think marionette's fine, honestly. I'm surprised that Luis is kind of low on this card. Card just seems super, uh, super sweet. Just like fills the graveyard, triggers descend. Decent blocker. Also quicksand, whirlpool. Kind of like a middling removal spell. Um, just got to take the marionette, I think. Ah, for any black white, be more defensive. Let's take the whirlpool. Let's try this out. All right, and we get moved into a bunch more black and white cards. We have, we have the Lance Cycler in both colors. We have the Spike Tail in black and the Sandwing in white. Pretty cool card, the Sandwing. Also a Mischievous Pup, uh, which can ETB and return permanency control to your owner's hand. Doesn't really do a ton for us, given we have so far, but can do things like the, uh, the draft and so on and so forth. Um... Sam is pretty sweet. It's also a way to descend and put things in the graveyard for our uh, our descend stuff. Got the Necropolis here also, which is pretty nice as well. These lands are pretty sweet. Just got a Sandwing and not be sure about it, honestly. He's definitely in draft number two here. Another late dead weight. Like that a lot. Uh, also, Echo of Dusk and uh, the Envoy are fine. Pretty like Confounding Riddle. Pretty good looking card here. But yeah, take the Deadweight for sure. Deadweight's just so awesome in these decks. I mean, it's just, you know, removal spell. It's a permanent. It's triggers to send. Just excellent, excellent card. Uh, we see a late Abyssal Gore Stalker. So this, this kind of fits the idea of our deck going wide. It's a big 6-6. Six, six. We lost this card last night. Uh, where if you have a bunch of crap in play, you just play this thing and kill her stuff. It's like a crap. Pretty cool. Also an offering. So Black seems kind of open here, which is kind of sweet. Take the Gore Stalker. So... Looking for, like, black-white go-wide stuff. Uh, we got an Acolyte and a Spike Tail. Just take the land here, I think. Um, Acolyte is fine, and Spike Tail are fine, but the lands are sweet. And they're the lands that, like, if you end up with 30 playables, you can't play them all. So value over replacement of just, like, some random playable or a land you're definitely going to play is pretty uh, pretty high. Let's take the land. And we got, of course... Uh, the old teamer pack for our uh, for our black white deck. Um, I mean, sure. We got destruction hammer and more cards that are off color. Not ideal. I mean, hammer's like, I guess maybe playable, but not very exciting. Thousand moon infantry two four for two untaps. Kind of cute with the tappy stuff, but yeah, not like a very exciting start here to our draft, honestly. Uh, and some blue cards. Black hasn't... I don't know. Black seems kind of open, but not really. Um, you know, Wander Glyph. All right. So, I don't know. Okay start, I guess. Um, not sure. Looking for a good pack, too, here. Got a lot of work to do as far as, like, finding uh, some things. And there we go. Oh, it's Preacher... Oh, my of the schism. Two four death touch for three. When it attacks the player with the most life, retire with the most life, make a vampire, and when uh we have the most life, we draw a card. Card's awesome. The preacher man here looks fantastic for our deck. Great on rate rare, very thematic, excellent. Good pack though. We got uh Lodestone Needle, the Scout, Captain Storm, uh Petrify. But yeah, pretty easy uh preacher here. Very, very happy. And we get past a Myco Tyrant. So this is a Star Star Fungi. Power of is equal to the number of creatures you control that are fungi or sapperlings. If you any of your end step, make X tokens where X is uh, the number of times you descended. Pretty cool, uh, pretty cool rare, honestly, as far as uh, you know, making more material for our War Scribe and stuff. I don't know how easy splashing is, though, realistically. We also got stuff. They also have the. Uh, the mural, which is not really us. Uh, Cloud Guard's pretty good too. Splashing seems tough. I mean, Cloud Guard's just like a super solid card for our deck. Um, splashing, splashing, splashing. Not an easy splash format, I feel like. But it is a pretty sweet looking card. I'm not gonna lie. All right, I'm in. I'm in. Let's try it. 
Let's just just do the thing. Uh, we got another Chupacabra Echo, which is awesome. Uh, so we're gonna look, be looking for Manifesting here. Man, kind of late dinosaur here too. That's good, but Echo's great, so happy with the Echo. Double Chupacabra Echo, double Deadway is pretty ass. A late scooter here. This card's awesome. Subterranean scooter is a phenomenal vehicle. Um, it's just a three four explorer. It's a really really good card. Um, I mean, right now we have what? Our white cards are not exactly super exciting. We just get out of white here. Like, we've got, you know, War Scribe's good. And they have a Whirlpool, which whatever, a Land Cycler, and a, a crappy creature. Maybe we just uh, look, maybe look at maybe look at the green or a different color. Um, this, this scooter is pretty insane. I'll just take a scooter here, honestly. Yeah, I'll just take a scooter. Like, there's no other color card in this pack. It's, like, super exciting anyway. And blue seems really open. So, and Scooter plays well with our Descend stuff also. Um, we got a Captivating Cave, which is a, a Mana Fixer, also a, uh, a cave. It'll be dark with rocks and mineral formations. I think I want a Puzzle Door here, though. So, Puzzle Door is a sick card for, for Descend decks. Um, it's permanent, goes to the graveyard, puts more cards in your graveyard. And with two dead weights of this thing, we can really pump our graveyard up for our, our Chupacabra Echoes. Um... And, like, maybe we splash the Myco Tyrant and have a longer game. Uh, but these green cards are not super exciting. I mean, the Cabra or whatever this thing's pretty cool, but let's take the Puzzle Door. Blue seems open, so let's try and uh, try and dip into blue here a little bit. Green's kind of open, too, actually. But, right, folks, don't forget, the uh, overlay is the untapped.gg overlay down of yourself for free. Uh, Dressmith, there are no rankings yet because such as came out, but obviously the LSV set review ranking. Um, another puzzle door, also in, inverted iceberg, a battle glyph, pretty good fight spell, but let's just take the puzzle door. We'll just go super deep into, like, descend stuff, honestly. Yeah, I'm in. So, I think we're just off, oh man, Tinker's Toad, damn. Uh, I think we're just off of the, uh, the white train. Let's get these white cards out of here. I think we're in the blue-black, maybe splash the, uh, Myco Tyrant train. So... Nautilus is pretty cool. This looks a good solid card, honestly. It's 1-4, Vigil ones for 2 with a pump ability. Pretty awesome. Um, cheap card, also a permanent. We get the Frilled Cave Worm, which I guess if we're descending super hard, um, is reasonable. Compass, no, and Compass find our Splash, which is kind of cool. Um, I think the Myco Tyrant does seem really, really good in our deck. So, let's take the Gnome. And help build Gnomes. So, a little, bit of, a little bit of fixing here. Honestly, really, really low curve, too. We've got double puzzle door, double dead weight. Our Gore Stalker's a lot worse now uh, because we're not playing, like, token-y stuff, I don't think, but we'll see. Just trying to find the final the lane, piece it all together, you know? Still got Preacher, which is great. Myco Tyrant, again, is a pretty sweet-looking card if we are uh, can descend a lot at a time, which is kind of cool. Morning, folks! Here's Welcome to the stream. My name is Jim from Hunter Player, full-time content creator. Wow, the freaking uh, Captain Storm tables. Damn. So another puzzle door. But I kind of want this promising vein. Uh, this puts a card in the graveyard for, for Descend, but also fixes for our Micro Tyrant, which is like kind of ideal, honestly. So, Remember, folks, first time hit that follow button. Watch on YouTube. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, support the channel, please. Helps out a ton. We had a Mycoid here, which seems excellent for our deck. Uh, should be very, very easy to trigger this very, very often. And then a Ray of Ruin, we might play as a removal spell, which is fine. So kind of going pretty good here, I think. Kind of weird we have four blue cards and they're all pretty like early stuff, but like they all fit pretty well too. So Pulse Door is pretty sweet. We got a runaway boulder and a echo. So this thing, um, if we're gonna be to send four all the time, it's a 3G flyer for five, it draws a card. Pretty cool, honestly. Uh not a very exciting card, but if we're all the way in, it seems pretty cool. Right now our lands are you have a promising vein and I have the white land, it's like an opposite. So. Another Basking guy. I really think it's this Brackish Bunder card is terrible. I don't know why uh, LSV is so high on it, but I'll take it, I guess. But just a bounce, generic bounce spell. Not very exciting. Map token, not very exciting either. A couple counter spells. All right, it's pack three. We open up. Ooh, okay, okay. Got to read, got to read. A Starving Revenant. A downward trajectory. Boy, a 4 4 4 When ETB is Surveil 2, and for each card you put on top of your library, draw a card, lose three life. I mean, descend eight. Whenever you draw a card, uh, opponent loses one, you gain one. See, it's pretty good, honestly. Pretty solid looking uh, rare here. Great stats, can draw cards. 
And then obviously he's good later in the game. We also have a join the dead, which is obviously insane, but they were taking the rare here. Um, yeah, all right, just take the revenant. Cool. The fixed shield root, if you will, yeah. And uh, we get past the pack here with not much in it. A cogwork wrestler, a hurl into history. Not very high of a card. Five mana counter spells, not very exciting. Uh, self reflection, kind of a cool card, actually. Uh, this is a card that can copy your own stuff. Mostly a card you want to just like mill it over and uh, or discard it. Don't know if that's a self mill, actually, though. It's not that, not that exciting. Rory Boulder is just like a big dumb uh, removal spell, which is like in cycle, which is fine. Pretty bad pack for us, honestly. Um, we're not self milling that hard either. This pack's bad. It's a pretty bad pack. Uh, I don't take the hurl. I don't know if we're gonna play it or not, but all right. So we got an offering, another mycoid, which is pretty exciting actually. Mycoid does seem really, really good in our deck. Uh, Ken has in blood, fanatical offering. We're not offering particularly well. Uh, not really keeping things in play when a sack, but I think Blood Red Michael is actually really, really good in our deck. Um, we've just got like a number of good things to trigger it. Decent sized body. It's a fungi for the uh, for the Myco Tyrant. Well, now that's one big mushroom. Cool, that one. We got another dead weight. Damn. Also, Visage of Dread. This card's kind of excellent. Uh, Thought Seize on an artifact. And again, most spells in the set are artifacts as well. So you get to kind of do. Uh, Hit most things. Or you can craft it for creatures also. Could just take like Deadweight here. Honestly, I think Deadweight is just like really, really good in our deck also. Third, I guess there's Diminishing Returns in the third Deadweight. So Diminishing Returns is an important feature where if you have a bunch of cards and you do minus two, minus two, then you're just like, pump as an X3. And you just look at three Deadweights in your hand. And you're like, ugh, so there's more variety. So I think a Diminishing Returns here is an effect. I think if we had zero Deadweights, I would take this, but we have two already. So let's take the uh, Visage. Card's pretty sweet. Spelunking. A Sunborn, another dead weight. There's just so many of them. Uh, I'll take it. I mean, it's still good. You know, other options here are just like Marionette, Acolyte. Both of don't seem particularly great in our deck. And dead weight is really good because we go if we go Blood Rage plus uh, dead weight on turn five or Michael Tyre plus blood, plus the dead weight on turn four. It's pretty awesome. So take that weight. More permanence. We're at 20 playables already, which is pretty sweet. Uh, still a little thin this back, honestly. Not the most exciting. Uh, Canonizing Blood, uh, really particularly exciting card. Wrestler, not very exciting. Spiders, not very exciting. This pack's just pretty bad. Just don't want any of these cards, honestly. Um, Fanical Offering, Acolyte, or a Draft. Now, the Draft, we're not doing a ton with as far as, like, sacrificing stuff. This is where we got kind of got lost in the sauce in our first draft. We had, like, some artifact sack stuff, but then some, you know, graveyard stuff, then some descend stuff. I didn't really feel like we got, we got all the way there. Uh, offering isn't really great in this deck. Acolyte isn't really great either. Just gotta take the Acolyte though. It's just like a creature that can block and so on. We got uh, another puzzle door, a snail, another promising vein, or a uh, deep goblin skull taker. We do uh, descend pretty well. Again, we can go turn four goblin plus dead weight. Pretty awesome. I think about the land here, though. We'll just like make sure, guarantee we can play. We can play this rare. And again, it's also just good in this deck. It's just like a descend card, at instant speed, puts a card in the graveyard, finds our fixing. Just really does a lot of the things we would like to be doing here. So pretty happy with the uh, the old KV. Oh, oh. oh. River Elf Scout, Scout is great for us. It's a cheap creature, explore, good on rate. You know, the explore cards are just good on rate in general. And then we have the upside of like it's gonna put things in the graveyard or could possibly descend. Pretty awesome. Now we're at 22 playables, which is great. Uh, thin pack. Wrestler is, I guess, playable. Solid Reflection, again, it's a card you basically want to mill. And we're not playing on a self-mill right now, so probably won't play this, but Wrestler. We got another Offering or Canonized. Um, I don't think we're playing the Offering, but let's take it and have the option. We have the Murpho Cave Diver. If you explore, it gets a bonus, which isn't particularly exciting. Another self reflection, and then a, a sift. I guess sift is fine in our deck. All right, you can take the late cave in, cut the cave deck. All right, so that's twenty three cards. Uh, we can probably find a twenty fourth card in our sideboard somewhere. Kind of an interesting one, honestly. This is a pretty good looking uh, deck. I wish we had a raise dead. Uh, it was like the mill to return to card. Should go pretty late. We didn't really get one. That would have been really, really good with our double chupacabra. 
a chupacabra. But uh, let's take a look here. So we got 23 cards. You can play one more spell in this deck. Um, Soul Cleaver, Deadly, Puzzle Door. Not a lot of things to sacrifice to this uh, offering. Oh, maybe the, uh, the two fours actually fine in our deck because we have the schooner. Visage, Compass, Noom. Uh, Preacher, Aqualite, Sift. Double Mike Lloyd, Double Echo, Revenant. Gotta add a card. We do have, we do have fun guy to offer, I guess. Maybe just the offering. We could try Hurl into History. Um, LSV did have it as ranked as a three, as a, as a, as a three, or, yeah, three, which is pretty good. Um, Brackish Blunder is also somewhat interesting. Um, maybe we're a little light on interaction, so we just want to have, like, the, uh, the functional trick. I like that, actually. I think the Blunder. I think our late game is pretty good, and, uh, the map token is pretty useful for us also, so... Put the blunder, and then we'll just uh, fire up our lands here, and look pretty good. We got, we didn't get any cascade lands, kind of sucks in our colors. So two veins, one forest. There is a somewhat risk of like milling over our forest. We have one green card, so if that happens, you know, it is what it is. So we have fourteen, it seems like seventeen lands. Uh, we want a lot more black than blue. I think we can take a take an island out here. So we have double promising vein. Compass Gnome also. All right, so pretty cool looking uh, Descend, like black, green, graveyard deck. Um, looks reasonable. Not sure if we're, not sure. No idea, honestly. Draft number two. We're kind of trying to figure it out. So, you know what time it is, folks? It's prediction times. Seven wins. Yay or nay. You two folks, take a second, pause the video, scroll the comments. Liking the video along the way. Please support the content if you enjoy Bronze Smith and want to see more of it. That's how you do it. Hit the like button in every video. Hit play. Hit like. Helps a ton. Twitch folks, place your bets. What's rock and roll? Episode two, Bronze Mythic. Let's do this. All right, let's get into it here. Like is like more than our last night, that's for sure. Chat coming out with me. Trevor Reese up. Thanks so much. And uh, hands great. Keep. We got Puzzle Door, Dead Weight, and then a good rare. Showed him the door. Sleight of hand. Forest Glow Cap Lantern. Green equipment. Could reach your list. Look at the top of your library whenever you want. And ever attacks explorers. All right, sure. So we got our puzzle door here. Um, you know, one drops, right? And just play lands, I guess. End step puzzle door. Get a little more information about what's uh, what's going on here. We got a basking. Uh, how do you say this thing again? I can't say things correctly ever. That's fine. Fire up the old puzzle door. There's a 1 3 unfortunately. We have Chupacabra, Echo, or Ray of Ruins. So, pretty easy Chupacabra. A Chupacabra. We can just freaking jam our rare. Love it. Preacher of the Schism. Capybara. Capybara. You're saying it wrong. No, I'm not. I'm saying it right. Capybara. Isn't Gorus Walker just actively unplayable? Um, I don't think so. I think if you have token stuff, we have a pretty good. Uh, pretty good uh, Token E makers or whatever. It's a 6 6. We lost to it last night. I think if you have enough crap in play, it's pretty sweet. Trap reset. Thanks so much. So this thing attacks. If uh, we're tied on life or they have more. We have been eaten by piranhas. Uh. So, we're in bronze, obviously. You're going to point out our opponent's mistakes, not to make fun of them, but the kind of thing. Obviously, the cards flash. Just read your cards, you know. But it would be much better in combat. This is the kind of card you want to use in combat uh, because you want to be able to you try to use it as a trick because now this thing's just sitting in play and one damage is not worth this thing being gone for effects like Gore Stalker and so on and so forth. So, all right, play a land. Um, Chupacabra Echo, no good here. Shift act for one and play our Blood Rage. It's got flash. I know, it's kind of weird, right? Kind of a weird uh, extra word on there, but makes this kind of like minus one, minus one um, effect much better. Because it's a trick, that's also a thing. Eaten by piranhas, all that's left is a skeleton. That's all that's left. It's a walking, talking skeleton, so, you know, but. All right, so we got our Blood Rage Mycoid. Time to unleash a deadly funk. And we have a frilled cave worm. They have a cave worm. All right, but the board is stalled. We have, now we just drew a starving revenant, which is awesome. 
Ocular Reset, thanks so much. So this is going to ETB Surveil too. And then we can keep cards on top to draw them or bin them. Pretty awesome. No triple black here for a dead weight also. That's fine. We'll get a token as well. And now we have a token. So we have, we have two things to sacrifice for our 6x, six -six, which is insane. So play this thing. Play Revenant. Surveil two. So we keep uh, each card you put on top. We draw a card and lose three. We want to we want to bin one of these just to uh, to trigger our descend. I think I'm gonna keep the land for the Gore Stalker. Honestly, it's also double black for Echo plus weight dead weight. It's also a, a permanent card for. We could just bin both. No, I, I want to draw. I want to draw the land. So so bin one, draw yellow value, plenty of light to play with. So yeah, put this on top. Let's draw this and uh, no attacks. Just say go. End step, we will descend, and They've descended. now we have a pretty awesome Gore Stalker next turn, and we're sacrificing a card to descend again, which is gas, so here's Poison Dart Frog, and here's an equip on the thing, so we have descend two currently for our Chupacab. We could just, you know what I want to do, actually, I think I want to... Deadweight the frog and Chupacabra the, the basking and then that opens up attacks for us and more tokens and we can Gore Stalker next turn to kill their next play and Cave Orb. So one of the big things in Magic is sequencing, right? It's not about this turn. It's about next turn and the turn after it also. We could just jam a Gore Stalker here, play a 6-6, six, six, sacrifice our two 1-1s, one, pretty good value. But then we still leave them with their best creature, uh, which we can do better than that, I think. So let's play a land. Let's play Deadweight on the Poison Dart Frog. This puts our third permanent in the graveyard. Let's play with Chupacabra. And kill the... Uh, I already forgot how to say it, unfortunately. And then we'll attack with our two creatures here. They can block one of them. They take four. We descend. And next turn we have a Gore Stalker. It's pretty sweet, so... The other old big booty block. Five is a lot more than four, that's for sure. We get a fun guy. We say go. They're going to play a big creature. We're going to Gore Stalker and blow them out. What card surprised me the most? Um... I'm only in draft number two, so I'm not sure yet. Capybara. They're going to cycle the Marauding Brine Fang. And they're going to land. And... Anything else? A Chupacab. So, kind of an interesting spot, right? Where they could... So that they had a Cycler, some sort of instant speed way to put a card in their graveyard. They could have a 4-5 surprise. It'd be kind of bad for us. But um, we're just at 15. We could just, like, attack. You, we, we could just Gore Stalker here anyway. Uh, it is still really good. Could have a counter spell or something like that, too, though. Kind of a weird spot, right? So this is a spot where, like we were saying in the last ep episode, um, being a good limited player is having a good spidey sense. So right now, like, the tinkles are going off. i have be like, all right. So, like, this is a little weird. They cycled. They played a land, said go, didn't equip. They have three cards in their hand. Didn't really add to the board. We could have a counter spell or a bounce spell or something weird here. So we we'll just gotta like pump the brakes a little. Let's we'll just chill. Um, I think we're still going to attack, but I think it might just be like attack and the Chupacabra post combat if after what they do. Um, yeah, let's play this. I'm just, I'm just gonna Leroy. You know, I think that counter spell feels reasonably likely here. Maybe a bounce spell. Let's attack and see what happens. We don't mind losing a Chupacabra here for a bunch of damage. And if they block, we can Chupacabra it again. It's pretty good also. So they're going to block the 4-4. Four, four. Okay. And I'm going to assume they can descend here. No, they have a Malament Scythe. So again, didn't know what it was, but you get the feeling there's something, right? So here's a Scythe. This is a bit of a trick here. It's going to work out really well for us though. So they'll Scythe here. This will be a 4-7. And then we're going to take a bunch of damage, do a bunch of damage. And now we'll just, uh, we'll just Chupacabra. Just Chupacabra, finish it off, and say go. We didn't even need our freaking Gore Stalker. And say go, crack the vein also, we get to descend. Fun guy everywhere. Looking pretty good. No constructed today? No, brought something today. No schedule, because uh, we're currently uh, shorthanded, so uh, that'll come as soon as possible. But we are brought to you by... Cool Stuff Inc. is proud to sponsor Jim Davis. We offer great deals on card games, tabletop RPGs, board games, and more. Get a free token featuring Jim Davis and take 5% off your next order if you use the code JIM5 at checkout. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. Let's rock and roll. 
All right, so we got River Scout, Sift, Mycoid, four lands. Pretty cool. Fungi everywhere. For looking for Constructed, check out my YouTube channel uh, because, of course, Tenure Brews are still going up. Tenure Brews was awesome this time around. Really, really cool. We'll play some Constructed later in the week. We got the Hidden Cataract. Okay. So Scout, Blood Rage, Chupacabra, Sift. Kind of a fun reprint. You know, a lot of, there's a few reskinned cards in this set that are reprints, but like they're just reskinned with a new name. The Myco Tyrant. So we got Cogwork Wrestler is the card. They leave it on top. So honestly, kind of a weird card to leave it on top because like now we know about it, but sure. <clears throat> we'll play our own scout and explore and find a land. All right, so we have a one-two. It's fun. Probably would prefer to prefer to spell on top there, but it is what it is. So once again, if you're, if you're uh Want to know what's going on here as far as my assistant goes? Um, I'm in the hiring process still. We're down to six uh, six in the hiring process. We're uh, past the applicant, past the interview stage, in like the deep interview stage. And uh, this is the week. Everyone's doing some work for me. We're going to see how it goes. And I'll be hiring someone hopefully ne early next week, which is great. Scout, puzzle door. All right. So kind of a slow hand here, honestly. They have a Sahili, the Sun's Brilliance, which can copy things, which is pretty powerful, honestly. And we're not really in amazing shape. Obviously, we have a thousand disfigures in our deck, but uh, let's, just, let's just pause the door and look for a, dis a uh, not disfigure. Not disfigure, not dismember. Dead weight. Dead weight? Dead weight? Nope. All right, so one goes to hand, one goes to graveyard. We'll keep the mycoid. Play a swamp. So we're building up to a chupacabra, which can kill the Sahili next turn, which is kind of cool. Uh, they want a cog work, sure. Not also sure. Flying Snake Reset, thanks so much. 631. Ooh. Uh, kind of weird play. It does have haste, uh, but sure. So we've got Corpses of the Lost. Pretty powerful rare here. This is a uh, an anthem for your skeletons. Uh, ETB make a skeleton. And then end step, you descend, you can bounce it and do it again. Um, hit our wind tracker. Sorry, it's a new feature here on the stream. I kind of forgot about it. All right, so we're going to play Chupacabra and kill this. This is pretty nasty, actually. Pretty good card. And we're a little behind on board, but we got to kill Sahili and uh, kind of get ahead on board if possible. Let's kill Sahili. Say go. We have another Chupacabra next turn. Uh, again, they can start descending and they return this. Pretty scary. Keep playing it over and over again. Pretty powerful rare, honestly. Pretty cool card. Tithing Blade. So this is the Edict. Very, very wide uh, delta in like how good this card can be. It can be insane or it can be mediocre. Here, kind of mediocre. We have a good thing to sacrifice. So we're up to three descend. All right, so we get a block here, right? We're going to block and kill. I guess we just block and kill this pirate. And then by killing the pirate, they don't descend. So they can't return this. Oh, they, they have the freaking thing, obviously. Uh, all right. Um... Ugh. Still, so we block the skeleton, make them use their cog work guy, and then we just troop a copper again next turn. Kill the 3-2. Have a good blocker here. Man. Yeah, card's good. Good sneaky little card. Even when it's not sneaky, it's still pretty good. We're at 14. I'm looking for a dead weight. Honestly, that's really the card I want to draw is dead weight. I'll just block here. Let him use it. Next turn. Allow a trade. That's, that's cool, too. They had a compass gnome they wanted to play instead. Sure. Works for me. The gnomes. What? So, I think that uh, dead weight might be our best draw here. If we could Chupacabra and dead weight this turn, be kind of guess. They find a captivating cave. We draw a brackish blunder. Uh, which will be good against the token. Unfortunately, we need rare to use that, though. We can't really double spell here, which sucks. We have a bunch of fours. It's really, really awkward. We're just going to Chupacabra Echo and kill the Scout. And not be thrilled about it. Kind of a clunky uh, draw. It's funny, our deck is actually pretty lean. We have a lot of really cheap cards. Uh, but we've kind of just drawn all of our fours this game. which is We've drawn four, 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 four. Yeah, it's all of our fours, right? We've drawn every four drop in the deck but Starving Revenant. Starving Revenant. 
So, luckily they haven't they haven't descended yet. Um, yeah, we're not gonna block here. Okay, mycoid blunder. Obviously, we I maybe mean, block. They they can't save it, but then they get to descend. But maybe the blunder though. I'm gonna block. All right, sure. I guess it's fine. Just stay alive here. We have card draw. I think we're the control deck here. They're the beatdown. So just kind of stay alive. Uh oh. That's disgusting. Um, hilariously, our opponent, <laughs> our opponent has made a major blunder. Uh, this card had haste because it's actually a skeleton. So this thing counts all of your skeletons, not just the tokens it makes. They got a jam for seven last turn uh, with vigilance and menace, and it would have absolutely destroyed us. So that's uh, you know I guess good for us that they didn't do that, but then we have to deal with this freaking thing too. So. We are in some doo-doo. Uh, yeah, it's a bunch of skeletons at once, right? We could, like, Blood Rage and then bounce this, I guess. We're in some trouble here, folks. I'm not going to lie. Uh, that's a pretty big bopper. 6-4 Vigilance Menace is pretty huge. And then if it dies, it might come back later. They have made a Brackish Blunder. All right, so we are just going to bounce this. That sucks, but... It's not even tap for the map token. God, this is killer. Uh, I don't love bounce bells. Here's corpses of a loss. Makes a three two. We draw a compass gnome, which is kind of cool, honestly. We can compass gnome and mycoid. Uh, but like, we're just on the back foot here. Yeah. All right. So mycoid compass gnome. Put a forest on top. We can Compass Gnome block the Skeleton. Probably they're going to play the freaking Great Mistake next turn. It's going to be absolutely monstrous. Get a Forest. Let's see, go. Yeah. Vigil Vigilance Menace creature with Haste, too, is pretty gross. They'll probably realize it this time, I think. Maybe not. Yeah, you know, we'll see. That's the question. If they pre combat it and attack with Haste, we're, we're in trouble. Right, please don't realize it. Please don't realize it. They realize it. They realize it. No! No, I didn't realize it. Oh, my God. All right, so 3-2. We're going to make sure we get Myco and then Ancestral, which is pretty cool, actually. Get some get some fun guys. All right, we'll block here. They get to bounce this, but I think it's fine. The great mistake. So let's go Ancestral Remembrance. Just need to discard any permanent here. We got Puzzle Door. All right, it's pretty sick. Discard the Promising Vein. Play land. Play Myco Tyrant. Now that's one big mushroom. And we're going to get two fungi, and this is going to be a... Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to get four. Nope. Three. No. We discarded one thing. <laughs> uh, we're going to get uh, one more. So three tokens. We have the two from this and one from this. It's going to be a 6-6. Six, six. They can't block, obviously, but I might just jam here. Um, I would love a trade, obviously. I don't really have good blocks anyway. Then next turn we have Soul Cleaver, Puzzle Door, and maybe a big attack. Team an attack. I'm just gonna send it. Wow. Bone's gonna block. So this is kind of weird, right? Because I, uh, they, I know we we got two we got two tokens. Also, it's sick. Um, this obviously will come back later in the game when they have to send eight. But like, it's such a monstrous bro uh, board presence that like. I don't think trading there is particularly good. They have life to play with also. So these are the kind of like, you know, the difficult decisions where like you might, oh my God. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Well, that sucked. Uh, the kind of tough decisions where like, you know, you might say is blocking with this card good because it comes back. Yeah, but it's not about in a vacuum is blocking with this card good. It's about looking at the context of the game itself right there. And the 6-4 Vigilance in play was really, really good on that board. So pretty sick. They have Malicious Escaper. I think we're going to be okay, though. We've got uh, Preacher, Blood Rage, Puzzle Door, 3-1. Uh, What's Puzzle Door first? And Descent 8's a lot. Yeah, it's not going to happen for a while. They're only on 4 right now. They have a long way to go. Oh, it's, I could have actually... I maybe I should have that first, actually. I screwed up. All right, sure. We have Visage. Yeah. Um, 
I think I wanted to play Preacher, though. And I kind of wanted to see what else was going on, too. But, yeah, I think I maybe a little sloppy overall, maybe. But let's thought seize them. And then we will Preacher also. Preacher blocks the 3 twos. kind of cool. Visage. They have their own Preacher and a Deadweight and a yeah, the Wrestler. Take, take, their, take their Preacher. Play our Preacher and attack. And now it looks like we're in great shape. Why is this, uh, this is glowing? Because they descended. So, but it's only on their end step, so. All right, they draw. Why does this guy always get eaten by piranhas? This poor guy. He's trying to live his life, you know? And we got dead weight on the mycoid. So not really an effective way to stop this. There's a cast the wrestler. Yeah, so this is just like a pretty classic bronze game where opponents just like, just not playing their cards particularly efficiently. It is what it is, you know. Um, we have our soul cleaver. We want to flip this thing. But we have the mill cards. We kind of want soul cleaver first, but maybe we want to do this actually. But it's visage. So, Mad Reset, thanks so much. Creature origin story? I missed it. Um, let's craft this bad boy. And let's ship Compass Gnome Herald. So this needs to be a 5-4 ATB Mills. And this will uh, trigger our Blood Rage. Put a big creature in play. We obviously don't get the value off the, off the Soul Cleaver, but whatever, it's fine. We actually milled over a creature in a land, or a creature in a spell. So combat, no good attacks, just say go. Nope, no, just say go. Hold on, hold on. Now my day's off. It's good. So now we're gonna take, they're still only going to send five. They play a land. Uh, they can Tithing Blade and craft this out of the graveyard. Would lose a creature for this. Out of the play isn't very good either. So looking pretty good. Preacher of the Piranhas. See, so yeah, it does suck that we uh, didn't couldn't find time to do this. But So they're going to craft the... Uh, the consuming... Why is every card this said impossible to say? I, whatever. That thing. And uh, now that I lose a card in the graveyard, this card's like, this card's never coming back. You know, so that block was made where it looked like it was going to be coming back. It's never coming back. All right, let's put the, uh, the Soul Cleaver on the Mycoid. We'll just kill this. Just, like, get all, all of our attacks in. Get our Descend on. Pump this thing up. Attack for a million. Mill some cards. Mill over the Schooner and Chupacabra. It's lethal, it's lethal, that works too. Alright, sure. So, game. kind of a bronze game, but we'll Blouses. we'll take it, I suppose. Also, there were some small errors in the last game. I think the major one was uh, the block with the 6-4. You know, like, really got to understand what the game looks like and what the board looks like and how things are going to matter as far as the board goes. So, alright, so that stands fine, we can keep it. We got rule spell, thought these a couple fours and a five. We have a little work to do as far as uh you know drawing lands. I think it's fun. I not it's also in a haste too, but that's just like a that's like a there's the thing is that in magic there are strategy errors and there are just like dumb mistakes, right? You know, oops I didn't uh, I played the wrong land, or oops I did this. Those are mistakes that like everyone makes those mistakes. You know, obviously you want to try to avoid them, but like they're not uh you know, they're not a strategic error of just like you being it's a blunder. It's blunders and mistakes. The strategy errors are the ones you really want to try and you know try and correct. Those are you know because those are fundamental. They have a roaming throne, which is a four four at doubles abilities of types. They have a herald guy, which can explore. They have a, a final strike, a ray of ruin, and a walk with the ancestors. So this is gonna oh we have, it's exiles great. So oh it is discard that sucks. All right whatever take the throne. Pretty good card. They can return it, but so we draw another land, which is cool. Unfortunately, we're not really doing a ton with it. Kind of sucks. It's like we really want to fetch uh, our green source if possible. We kind of need to get the blue. So just say go. Need to draw a land here, obviously. But our hand's fine. A couple fours. Get some lands in the graveyard for my uh, my chupacabra. My chupacabra. All right. So the river hollow guide is obviously a phenomenal uh, target for our dead weight. Let's get our island. We might actually use Chupacabra to kill it if they, uh, they draw land, sure. We draw land also. God, get my forest, please. 
So we can go... We could go dead weight here, but, like, I think that we'd want Chupacabra. Just get on the board. You know, Gotti spent all our mana of his turn. Let's we'll just kill this. Get it out of here. Get off my Stupid plane. merfolk. It's a mermaid! A mermaid? And then next turn we have Mycoid and Deadweight, possibly. We have Echo, we draw a Lamb, which is great. So here is an Armored Kin Caller. It's a 3-3. That'll uh, gain three if you reveal a dinosaur or you control a dinosaur. But they ain't got no dinosaurs. So uh, we have Nautilus, Blunder, or Mycoid here. So attack. Attack and hope they, hope they block. Would love a block here. Play, play the Mycoid. This is an interesting thing, too. Kind of like Morbid in the Morbid sets, where... You almost like don't want to block here and turn on the descend cards because by blocking you're enabling their descend. Important thing to note. All right, so let's play this thing. Whatever, play this thing. So they go. They have a few rule spells in hand, but it is what it is. They're not particularly the most valuable cards in the world. We have an echo, which is going to draw a card, which is great. Uh, we got some good other stuff in our hand. We want to get creatures in the bin for this thing anyway. So a little anti synergy here with this card and the descend stuff. Honestly, I guess it has mill cards too, but. Here's a Mine Shaft Spider. Very, very creepy. ETB Mill 2. Decent sized body. 3 4 reach. And they're going to mill over the Seeding Tower and a Forest. They currently have to send 4 already, which is kind of cool. And they're attacking for 3. It's fun. Don't mind that. We draw a land. So now I can echo and draw a card, kind of guess. Um. They do have the Ambuscade in their hand. Though, just playing this thing and blocking this, this, I feel like this card is like an old school limited card. Just like 3 2 for 4, ETB draw card, kind of clunky card draw, card value card. Like, that's like an old school limited card. Um, we could blunder here. Like, it'd be pretty aggressive, but just get it for 7, blunder, play Nautilus. I'm just gonna attack an Echo, though. If they want to trade, whatever. You know, getting fungus is cool and all, but, like, this is a pretty decent, decently static card. All right, great. Could also hold Blunder to, to, to negate the fight spell. Um, like, play Nautilus and play Blunder and hold up Blunder, but, like, they might not go for it anyway. They have this thing, too. There's no guarantee they cast it, and, like, none of my creatures are that important either, I don't think. I'm just gonna play this Echo. I'm gonna use, use all the mana. If they just, like, play a 6-drop and don't go for the, the fight spell... Then, like, we've, we've, we've wasted a lot of mana here. This card's totally fine to play on this turn. So, here's a cave. Yeah, so Ray of Road. So, exactly. So, like, I guess we could have, like, bounced whatever they tried to kill. But, like, whatever. You know, it's fine. So. All right. So, here comes the 3-4. Uh, again, we're in bronze. You know, this attack is very, very odd. So, this card can attack successfully. But again, one of the most common mistakes that, that, that less experienced players make is they're thinking about this turn. They're not thinking about next turn. So right now, on this board in a vacuum, is this attack safe? Yes. Is it a good attack? No. Because now they're taking a bunch of more damage on the backswing and they're already behind on life. So this is sort of like a I want to race attack, but they're just really, really behind on life and board. Uh, so it doesn't work out very well. Uh, so now we get to play a land. Now we're going to have Nautilus and Blunder up. Now if we want to get super aggressive. We could actually um, just deadweight the kin caller and get in for seven, and then have the blunder up and play Nautilus. Pretty sweet. I like all of this. So usually you want to use deadweight to kill things. Uh, in this case, we're not going to, but we have a really really solid play. We're like think about this entire turns like all right, we play the deadweight attack for seven. They have no good blocks. They untap. They need to use their ambuscade. We have a bump spell to counter it. Like we're kind of like just lined up really really well here. So. Let's deadweight. Let's attack. Their blocks aren't very good. We play Nautilus, and now we have the blunder up safely. So there's a chump block, sure. And now we, we've gone from very aggressive attack to chump blocking in the same the same turn cycle. Usually an ind indication you made a mistake, you know, because the, you know, it's a thing. So we even get to descend too. Guess because our deadweight died. I love it. And now our board's super wide. Nautilus slaps too. Here's your final strike, and then. Uh, you know, we said we said it was gonna work out like this, and uh, it's blunder time. Ugh. Sorry, ah, I almost feel bad for him. You know, here's just 
browning bronze players. We'll be at a bronze shortly, folks. Don't you worry. Spider returns, mill some cards, but now we're just like super in the thing. I actually like this card a lot. The Nautilus is a really, really solid card. Uh, one for which ones for two is just fine. In fact, it just gets slapped for four late in the, in the late game. is super awesome. So now we're just going to Leroy. Just attack with everything. And like, they kind of have to block one of these. All right, they're going for the... Uh, Go over the value block. We're going to get him for uh, for nine points of damage. Put them to one. And play land. And say go. So this is a game where, uh, again, the errors my opponents are making uh, is a lot of what's good right now. And again, the point here is not to make fun of my opponent. Maybe, maybe they're a newer player, less experienced, what, whatever it might be. You know, they're, they're playing, they're having a good time, whatever, it's great. But I want you to learn and not make the same mistakes. The, the key thing about this game is that every turn, the play they made looked fine in a vacuum, right? I might have blocked the 3-3 three, three with a 3-4. With Makes sense. But it was not looking at the big picture of what this entire game looks like. Uh, so you're not just not looking at the big picture, which is one of the most important things uh, in, the, in Magic in general for getting better. All right, Double Cave, Puzzle Door, Ray of Ruin, Gore Soccer, Gnome. This is fine. A little bit finicky of a hand, but fine. We got a Mountain, and we're saying go. We got Puzzle Door, sure. So obviously a little slow here with the Vein of Doors, but it's fine. Burning Sun Calvary. This is a Dinosaur Payoff card. So the problem is, like, if I play a, a, a gnome and try and block this turn, we run into the problem of, like, if they play a dinosaur attack, I have no good blocks. I'm also not getting a land off this, because we already have all the lands you don't ever want. So... That being said, I'm, I'm just going to play the gnome. Play gnome. We could get an island here. It makes our next turn better. Um, and our fifth land in the... Uh, our fifth land is not the worst. The Ray of Ruin also and the Gore Stalker. I'm going to get an island. Say go. So I can I can Puzzle Door for sure next turn. I can also hit Dead Weight off Puzzle Door, which is pretty good as well. It's kind of like, again, thinking about next turn. So again, like we like we were saying in the last game, you know, it's really important to think about next turn. So next turn, we can play Island, Puzzle Door, and then possibly hit Dead Weight because we have three Dead Weights in our deck, which would be a great turn for us. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go land. Puzzle door. And nope, tap the green. Be careful the auto zapper, obviously. We find a Chupa Oh man. Two bangers here. Chupacabra or Myco Tyrant. Uh both these cards are really good. We've got Gore Stalker. I think with the Gore Stalker, I want to on the Myco Tyrant. So I'll take the Myco Tyrant. And uh, no attacks, just say go. Braun, reset, thanks so much. This would be a big dino turn, probably. Yeah. Time for three. All right. This is a four, five reach, just have to deal two. Now I draw dead weight. That's actually a sick. No, it's not a sick draw because we can't do it. We can't Mike go and dead weight because we don't have two black. Oh, killer. Um,. That sucks. All right, so we can, we can just go Dead Weight and Promising Vein and Puzzle Door and just do it next turn, I guess. But. All right, so. Wait, let's we'll just Dead Weight the Calvary. We'll Ray of Ruin the Altasaur and just play the Puzzle Door also. Yeah, let's do all the stuff. So play this. Play this. And uh, just say go. So we'll. Promising Vein this turn for second black. And go from there. Here's a Hot Foot Gnome. 3-1 that gives haste. And a Scythe Claw. Man, they're coming at us. Jesus. Dinosaurs, huh? Alright. Uh, so they're going to attack for 8 this turn? It's pretty good. Uh -huh. Alright. Here's 8. I'm just going to crack this and get a Swamp. Try the, I wish I had the Chupacabra now. If I had taken Chupacabra over my Gotar, we'd be in a much better shape, but couldn't have known at the time, obviously. 
Drunk Island. So we can Ray of Ruin the Altasaur. We take a lot of damage, though. But it's kind of our only option, honestly. Uh, unfortunately, we just don't have time. We, don't, we just didn't... We just didn't have time to set up our Michael Tyrant into the Gore Stalker of his game, unfortunately. If I were to puzzle door and Michael, if I were to puzzle door into a dead weight, so right now we're like, okay, we're really, really behind. How? What needs to happen for us to win this game? So we need to think about all the things we could draw and things can happen and try and play towards it if possible. Blocking there is bad because the Compass Gnome can block the, the Hotfoot Gnome next turn. So, like, we're just losing a blocker for nothing when we, we, we have good blocks next turn. So, we could Puzzle Door and then try and find Dead Weight, which would be a, a huge boon for us. Also, we Myco Tyrant make a token. It makes our Gore Stalker live next turn. Alright, that's what we're going to do. We need help, folks. We need a, we need a, day, a dead weight, please. Here we go. Actually, it makes two tokens here, right? Dead weight! No. Alright. Let's take the Remembrance. We've been the permanent. And we're going to play a land in the Myco Tyrant. And we're going to say go. We get two tokens. So now we can block the Myco Tyrant, block this thing, and then play the Gatekeeper next turn, or Gore, whatever, Gore Stalker. But I think we have a chance this game, folks. No! Damn it. And now we're, yeah, now we're attacking everything. And if we had one more life, I could block here, but I can't now because of the uh, they killed my thing. So pretty good draw on their part, unfortunately. They had, like, if their last card's not a kill spell, we'd definitely win this game. Uh, but... All right, we got a chump, and now we go to one. Yeah, that's killer. Yeah, all right, that's fine. Um, does stink that we had taken the Chupacabra. We're probably fine this game also, but we go to one. Because we have, it sucks because we have Gore Stalker, which is pretty great here. It's a 6-6, six, six, but just took too much damage. So pretty good draw on their part. Unfortunately, a very awkward draw on our part, drawing both Promising Veins. Uh, so we needed to, like, we needed to like kind of finick our, our, our colors here and there and stuff, which couldn't really get there. These can't block, obviously. Uh, yeah, I mean, Gore Stalker's cool, but not good enough. So, all right, yeah, kind of a stinker, is what it is. They have exactly enough to do it. So they sacrifice two things, tackle both things, and kill us. So, we couldn't, if, if we had one more life, we could have blocked the 3-1 and gone to 1 and then won the game. We would have uh, played Gore Stalker, killed two things, had a 6-6, six, six, but we, we were at exactly enough that we had to block, unfortunately. So, all right, so, hands great, keep. We have Promising Bane to power up our Chupacabra. Shire Terrace in Lord of the Rings wasn't great, but I think both being a cave as well as being a permanent for Descend is huge in this format. Here's a scout. We'll let them resolve their surveil. And they're going to get a, uh, a land. Sure. We're going to get our own land. Islands. It's weird. Why is there no text? Odd. All right, so play land, play the Acolyte. We have Chupacabra for one next turn, which is not very exciting, but... Scout number two. If you're still here, folks, this is Bronze Semitic, a show where I draft my account from Bronze Semitic. My name is Jim, Pro Magic Player, full-time content creator. Hi there, hello. This is a show I do every set. And uh, we're currently in draft number two here, as you can see, right there. Episode two, draft two. And the, uh, the win counter is over here now. Uh, new thing, three wins and one loss. Um, I'll forget to update it sometimes because it's new, but uh, it is pretty, pretty cool. So, all right, play Blood Rage as they go. No great plays here. We have the Ray of Ruin. We have the uh, the Gore Stalker and the the Fungi. No. What? Time to unleash a deadly fungus. Okay. I mean, so. Once again, we were saying this earlier, your uh, your Peter Tingle, you know, your spider sense here should be going off to the roof here, right? Seven cards in hand and no play. So possible counterspell, possible a lot of things. Uh, rare one's a sorcery, unfortunately. We can go land. Um, we can like soul cleaver onto the mycoid. Like... But you don't want to cast Chupacabra. Don't want to cast Ray of Ruin. 
It's kind of the only real option. Yeah, so see, I got Counterspell. Here's Soul Claver. What do you got? Nothing? Okay. And it gives Vigilance and not much else. We can just put it on the Mycoid, I suppose. Um, I wonder if, uh, if I were to sack the Soul Cleaver when it's on a creature, I believe it would get a counter. I think. Put this here. The common counterspell in this set is a, a blue blue two for counterspell that costs blue blue for for career or remove soul. So, oh, and for another artifact, got it. So we're not gonna counter. So now it comes down to like, do I want to attack here? Uh, they could have like the one two that like shrinks. They could have a bounce spell. They could have a lot of things here. It's hard to like conceptualize what they could have here. Uh, that being said, how valuable is our blood rage? My good is uh, the big question. It's pretty valuable actually. Um, I think I'm going to just not attack here. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if well to know exactly what they have. It's only draft number two. But, like, this just doesn't feel safe. We can just chill. I think this card's pretty important Um, as far as enabling our Gore Stalker. I'm just going to chill. No attacks. There you go. And now by not attacking, you might be like, well, you wasted an attack step. Well, they wasted four mana. So, all right, they have joined the dead. Sure. So, if I attack, this would have happened anyway, which is totally fine, too. So, let's sack this and get... um. That sucks. You know what? I think I might have screwed up. Nah, they just killed no response. I gotta move the equipment, but... Alright, so... Sack it. Drain. They get attack for two if they want to, I guess. But it's fine. So, that's what they had. Join the dead. And every time your opponent does something weird, your goal is to, like... Okay, something weird's up. Something's going on. Trying to trying to figure it out. And you gotta just go through the checkboxes of what they could have and not have, you know? Now they answer the question, and now we know that that one weird thing is gone. All right, so black, black, blue, leaving up blue, blue. Might also have the counter spell too. So now, once again, this card's really good, by the way. So once again, did something weird. Magnum tap their land, left up blue, blue. There is the counter spell for blue, blue, the counters creatures. And that would have made sense last turn also. So even because, because they cast this, doesn't mean they didn't have that also. Uh, so that's definitely on the radar here. I think we're very, very unlikely to want to cast a uh, creature here. Also, Sting Cave Crawler is a really good card. Uh, Death Touch for 1-3 and can draw cards later. We're just gonna kill this. We're just gonna jam our Ray of Ruin and not play a creature. So, we're just gonna Ray. Scry 1. We're gonna see a Chupacabra. Love it. And then we're just gonna, uh, I think we're just gonna chill here. We don't wanna trade 1 damage for 2, so we'll just say go. If they're buffing it, sure. That's fine. You know, like, the thing is that, like, um, it's not about them leaving up blue-blue last turn. That makes me think they have it. It's the turn before it where they didn't do anything. So again, you're, when you're building up your repertoire of like, what do you think they have? It's not about like, okay, two blue blew up. They must have this. It's no. What happened last turn? What happened the turn before? How they play this game? What? Every turn your opponent plays and does things, they're giving you information. Your job is to pick it up and then organize it into a useful fashion. So now, nothing's changed so far. We think they still have it. Let's we'll see how they play this turn. They play a Waterwind Scout, leaving up two blue again. So... Again, I still think likely they have the counter spell, but we'll see how we're going to play our turn. Thanks, Revenge. Appreciate it. So, untap. And unfortunately, we're kind of like stuck here in that like we kind of just have to play into it at this point um, because we, sh we can't do nothing this turn. Our hand is pretty good. Um, I would say it's funny because like all of our cards in hand are very good. That, like, we're going to end up getting a good card countered here. So what good card do you want to counter? I think it's Chupacabra. Well, Chupacabra, try and kill this. They'll counter it. And then next turn we can Echo or Chupacabra. Yeah. I think... Is Echo more important than Chupacabra? Drawing card's great. It's all flying soon enough. Hmm. Tough call. They still have four cards in hand. They didn't use their map either, which is a little weird. Because um, they had a block they could have spent on the map. But Vigilance and things gets to grow. I think it's cheaper. I could draw, could draw dead weight too. Ah, I think Echo's more important. Play Chupacabra. A Chupacabra. Anyone? The Chupacabra episode of the uh, X-Files? Sorry. So there it is. So I'm smart. Yada, yada, yada. There's the car we said that they thought, we thought they had. Which is fine. And uh, we'll just say go. 
So again, all the, uh, the evidence pointed to this card over a three-turn cycle. All right, take it to attack now. They got a map. Still didn't use the map token. We're going to block. Equipment looking kind of crappy right now. We're at 15. They still have four cards in hand. Oh, God, this card. That was really good. Uh, just so big for a... Uh, so big for a... A blue black creature. All right, we got to kill this, I think. We got we to gotta Chupacabra this. So we're going to end step. We're just like Soul Cleaver. Give us our fourth card and then Chupacabra it. It feels like it feels bad, but like we just gotta do it, I think. So sack this thing. Drain for one. Feels bad. Untap and draw a schooner. I like schooner. So play all chupacabra. Do four to this thing. Get off my plane. And then uh just gonna say go here. Yeah. If they kill this, I'm able to block one of these, so. Not ideal. It is to send eight, but like it's a long time. They're gonna end step a wrestler. That's insane. Uh Alright. Just wanna get that one two out there. Gore Stalker is a weird card, for sure. Might be unplayable, might be really good. It's draft number two. What, what do I know, you know? They're gonna map. And they're fine. Shard, of course. Damn, what a good one. All right, so that's pretty good. Uh, we get a schooner next turn. I'll have flying also. I can block this, but... And they just got it all here. All right, and now if I sack this, I can't block, but that's fine, because like, I, I they just attack anyway, so... Pollock's really doing it here. Uh, they're really popping off. Can you stop? Jesus. What is going on here? Zoetic Glyph on the Rustler. Makes sense why they played that now. We're just getting shit clowned. Uh, we're just dead. Yeah. All right, I guess. Um, I thought these one twos would be fine, but let's draw a card. That's why I, that's why I cast that, which makes sense. Plus, playing well, honestly. You gotta understand also that, like, not everyone in bronze is a bronze level player. You know, people who haven't played in a while. Oh, the new second out. I'll go play again. You know, opponent could be, like, a pressure level player, for all we know, you know? So, all right, play this and say go. We're just pretty dead, right? Um, Glyph's a pretty sweet card, yeah. Kind of weird in blue-black, honestly. Blue-black is not an artifact color, so it definitely looks a little weird here. It's like the only artifact they've played is this one guard, but worked out well for them this game, you know? So we got a block here and jump block here. And not sure what we're drawing here, but... Down a five. Chart, of course, draw two. Pretty busto. All right, we got to stop and take a break here. We need to just chill on the uh, the old rare skis for a second. All right, so we're dead. Yeah, I mean, Bones draw lined up pretty well against ours, unfortunately. We have a good, good card quality too, but like, you know, just kind of uh, did their thing. And that's that, I guess. Man. All right, uh, we got Soul Cleaver, Gnome, Double Mycoid. Feels pretty good. Just gonna play the old soul cleaver. We can gnome up a uh, a black or green source here. I wanna, get, I wanna get a black source, I think. No, because we can get green later. We get done double black stuff, so. Oh, never mind, your swamp. So, don't want to gnome here at all, is the question. Uh, I think the answer is no. I just don't want land number five here, so let's just decline. Just decline. All right, so uh, red green. We got a uh, a dinosaur deck. Sure, that's fine. Um, now it's interesting here because we have promising vein. We kind of want to hold this um, for after our mycoids are in play. So like we're just gonna play a land and equip an attack. Um, just like free attack for two. This thing can't grow its toughness, so like if they play a big dinosaur attack, which block, which is fine. So good trades here, honestly. Then we have Mycoid to Mycoid and sack the land. I'm gonna strike down my freaking compass gnome. Poor little guy. 
All right, so that's fine, obviously. Deadweight's a sick draw. So we're going to play the Mycoid here and set up for next turn Mycoid Deadweight, which is exactly what we were talking about during the draft portion. Uh, why Deadweight's so awesome. Good removal spell. And then also, just like a cheap descend trigger, too. So. All right, so opponent just didn't attack for six. They have, like, the stone-cold nuts. They're playing a constructed dinosaur deck. Um, that's fine. I will take that, I guess. Man, really going at it today. Uh, all right, let's kill this thing and make our tokens as they go. We have Ray for the uh, Hammer Skull, which is pretty good. So make your tokens. They don't play a dinosaur. It stuns. I believe that all the 1-1 flyers make going blue, white, or green strong. I'm not sure, honestly. Here's the Bronton on James. Tag for six. Sure. Uh, we'll just Ray ever in this thing. It's fine. You know, we're taking some hits here for sure, but... We draw the old Schooner. Not much to do with that just yet. Schooner's a good good card for these fun guy though. So we'll Ray everyone kill the Hammer Skull and just say go. We could bash for eight for I you know maybe just act actually. I'm gonna Ray everyone this. Let's see what our scry is. It's a dead weight. They are they, they, they missed a land drop, which is pretty pretty important. Um because obviously diners are pretty big. Is dead weight good here? Is the question. Uh I think so. We're going to keep dead weight. Keep dead weight. And now, like, I think we just attack. Like, we attack for eight. They don't block. They untap, attack back for three, and put us to four. Let me just attack for eight again, though, or even more. Um, we have dead weight and schooner and vein or equip. We can vigilance also on our soul cleaver. That was a jam. Attack the both fungi. Those, those, that just like invites him to block one of these. We attack for nine. Which I don't think it's worth it. So, I mean, nine, nine is eighteen, but like, yeah. All right, let's do this. Let's tackle these. Send it. We got a block. Awesome. We love a block here. So, great, great spot. If I die with the one ones, I think they're much more inclined to just block a one one. So, like, and I want the trade. So, here's a volcano. Here's a hot foot gnome. Scary haster. And, uh, I mean, that makes our dead weight obviously insane. So, this game's... Oh, I should have come first. I screwed up. Whatever. I got excited. Um, my bad. Whatever. Uh, missed a point, but now, now the game is completely turned, though. The game's just over at this point, so... My bad. Hi, I'm Jim. Welcome to Bronze Mythic. Then we'll just say go. Opponent had lethal. No, they were one short. If our opponent just didn't block and then played the thing, they were one short lethal. They were at seven. They had six damage. Dynomaton. And uh, I think we're good here. We get to... Uh, crew attack, four, three, vigilance, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we're just good here, right? Attack at everything. Explore. Get a land, sure. They got a block here, most likely, sure. And they, uh, go to onesie. Maybe I should have moved the, uh, no, I want it on taps, actually, so. All right, put this here, play this, just say go. So, Bone Stack is pretty good. Definitely missed a spot or two with uh, the pumpy stuff. Obviously, just like Hammer Skull and the Yearling is like constructed dinosaurs. They're going to Daring Discovery. Uh, I think this card is actively heinous. Um, it just... A falter effect that's really expensive. It has no extra bonus because, like, discovering... It's either a 5-mana discover or 5-mana falter, which are both really, really bad. But whatever, we'll take it. Now we're at silver. Moving on up. All right. So we're on the play with a pretty awkward hand. Uh, we've got dead weight, two lands, Chupacabra, no blue, and no third land. We are 42% to draw land. 
And we have a number of cheap uh, black cards. You have multiple dead weights, Compass Gnome, uh, Visage. That being said, I think Risk of Ruin here, we're just going to mulligan. I think I would keep this on the draw. I think on the play, this hand's just a little too tough. Our deck's pretty good. On the draw, I keep this. On the play, we're going to mulligan. It's just not worth, uh, you know, it's kind of cool because we have dead weight and the Chupacabra, but like, there's just not, just too much stuff here that can't happen. And uh, we need to draw, uh, like, two lands, basically. So we're going to mulligan. And we mulligan into a pretty good hand. This is fine. We got Door, Mycoid, Echo, Gore Stalker. I think we'd have the Gore Stalker, which is kind of awkward. Um, there's no guarantee that we're going to get our Mycoid to work anyway, so let's do this. So, obviously, Promising Bane, kind of awkward here again, but is what it is. We got a cave. We got the door and the vein. So vein, door, mycoid. Crack the cave. Get an island and untap and draw a. All right, sure. So let's play the door. Question is, what we're going to use the door or not? Like, we could hold door for mycoid. But we have a turn five play that taps all of our mana anyway. So, like, probably not worth it. Yeah, I'll just, just crack the door. I might find another door. Something like that. Let's see what's up. All right. So, door. Looking, we have a, man, Revenant and Gore Stalker. Revenant's great. That's kind of cool. All right, let's play get Revenant. Play Forest. There you go. So, Descend is currently three already, which is awesome. They have a seismic monstrosaur. Clever girl. And uh, get a land, say go. There's not a ton of fixing in the set. The splashing is kind of hard. All right, so they play. They say go with the mismana up. Kind of, kind of sketchy, honestly. Um, I think we're gonna play the mycoid. It's kind of weird because like, so this is a spot where okay, opponent didn't do anything. They have seven cards in their hand. They definitely could have a removal spell here. But what kills what? Uh, a braid jumps to mind, which would kill the mycoid. There aren't a lot of things that kill Revenant here, even though I kind of would rather play Revenant after mycoid. I mean Revenant, though. Like, what kills this? If they have black, black, they could have, like, their murder spell. They don't have that. I don't think there's much that kills this, honestly. So, let's just play, uh, play Revenant. We're also at 20. We can draw some cards off it, too. So, here's Revenant. We see a mycoid and a puzzle door. I'm just drawing both these. Yeah, I'd ship them. Six mana, six life, draw two. Love it. At any cost. Give me what I want. All right, they got a rock slide. Awesome. So great exchange for us. Here is the Myco Tyrant. Now we get to go land, uh, Blood Rage, door. And then next turn I can go door, Mycoid, or door, Myco Tyrant. Awesome. We're doing it, folks. The fun guy plan is in effect. I think of all the wilds would be great in this set. Yeah, it would be better than Promising Bane for sure. All right, they're going to defossilize their seismic monstrosaur. Pretty good, honestly. Maybe it's the power trying to come back on. So they explored twice. They have a seven-six trample on turn five. That's pretty good. Um. Huh. All right, so I think we're just going to start by dooring and seeing what turns up. We'll have five mana left. We can Blood Rage or Myco Tyrant. Try to find a kill spell here or Swamp. That works too, I guess. So I've been a Swamp. That's two permanents hitting the graveyard. We could dead weight the Monster Saur and make it so we can block with the Mycoid. Um, Sucks is playing Myco Tyrant isn't very mana efficient this turn. Um, well, you might as well play the Echo. So, need to figure out right now, am I, am I blocking this if they attack? Or am I going to try and block regardless, like double block or whatever, or deadweight it? 
If not, I'm gonna attack. And then like, do I play the Echo? Take seven. Do I play the Myco Tyrant? Get the Sapperlings going. This will be decently large. All right, I am not gonna block. I'm just gonna attack. Let's attack. Hope they block. Oh, glorious day! All right, so we're gonna kill this, and now we get to make four freaking tokens. Love it. So, that's the kind of block where, like, your opponent's got something, you know? It's not, probably not a bluff. Like, we're 14, you're 20, and we're attacking into your thing. It's probably gonna go well for us, so you just take the four, you know? So, next one we have the Mycoid. We got the next one we're gonna Echo, probably, though. The one expected resub, thanks so much. Remember, folks, five bucks a month, best way to support the content, not even close. Join the pile drivers, tons of perks. Twitch sub or YouTube member on the main channel. And what do you get? Access to Discord, events every month. Pile driver is coming up. I'll talk about that in a little bit. We do holiday cards every year. Want to get a free signed token from me, as well as uh, whatever this year's token is and a few more other goodies. It's in the holiday card, free for all subscribers in the Discord. Check it out. Appreciate y'all. And then we'll talk about the... Uh, Talk about the uh, previous little more too. So they play Curator of Sun's Creation, which is a double discover card. It pays to discover. And uh, we'll play the Echo. Start there. Duke! Duke Nukem! I'm here to kick ass and chew bubblegum. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Draw Chupacabra? Insane. Right, let's play land. Uh, we should jam everything here, right? Yeah, we're in. So they eat a fungi, it take a bunch of damage, awesome. Now they're at 12, we have a, a literal chupacabra in our hand, as well as a mycoid. We have an amount of cast Bolton, which is awesome. If they have some big cascader here, it's kind of scary, but... I guess they have a land, right? They us take a double cascade off a land, but... Hey, could even be a boat. No! Bloodbraid Elf! Double Bloodbraid Elf! They find a plundering pirate... And they discover again. And they find a Echo of Dusk. Pretty, uh, pretty gross. All right. What's up? What's up, Elf? First time chatter. Welcome. All right, that was pretty gross, obviously. Uh, double Blood Braid Elf here. Hitting a, a three drop and a two drop with some value, but sure. We get to just, like, kill some stuff here. Uh, let's kill this Curator before that happens again. And then Blood Rage. Uh, I have a flyer also. It's pretty good. Um, yeah. A chupaca. Hey, Blinken! So kill the curator. Because they, they have a land to play also. They can do it again. Kind of a weird card. Because like, there isn't much discover in the set. So it's kind of like a weird like enabler. But what is this? Magical offering. Sack draw. Alright, that's fine. So they offering. Uh, we get it for three in the air. And we'll just uh, double my quid. So... Still bring a shape here. We're doing good things. Make a funk. Oh wait. Never mind. I'm thinking dead weight. Sorry, my bad. So no, 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 uh, no descent, Mister. Next turn we can descend. So they have a rampaging ceratops. Can't be blocked by three more creatures, and they're gonna explore onto the ceratops. They find a sunfire torch, also pretty good. Man, they're kind of kind of hitting their spots here, right? Jeez, they got to defossilize on turn five. They double. They they, they they're like you know, they're living the dream here. Like they've all the fun things that deck wants to do. Reanimate this thing, double explore. They've done all of them. So, all right, let's cast. We only have one green card. Let's tap this thing and play our 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 sift. We draw a dead weight, promising vein land. So kind of gas. We get to do a bunch of things this turn. Uh, let's play, uh, let's get rid of the island. That's one descend. And then I get to dead weight for double descend for the Myco Tyrant. So we're going to get attack for three in the air and just say go. It's pretty good. We go land. I'm just going to kill, I guess the pirate. I guess the, the echo is about, the echo will be on if I don't kill this. We'll kill the echo actually. So kill this and then attack for Three in the air. Why is this all effecty? I don't get it. All right, uh, attack with this, and then play our Acolyte and say go. So we get two more tokens. We have an eight-eight Myco Tyrant. Fungi out the wazoo. 
time to unleash a deadly fungus. This is like my fathomless descent aura. Kind of weird because it has no relevance in play, but sure, whatever, I guess. We got Acolyte with the fungi now, too. They can Sunfire Torch and kill my flyer, but like, I think at this point it's kind of whatever, you know? I think we're, I think we're fine. Definitely doing it this game. So they, they're doing it, but we're also doing it too. All right, friend. They also have the Restless Vents. I didn't even see them play that. Good creature land. A bunch of fun creature lands in this set. Oh my god. Am I dead? Are you freaking... Did I just get slow rolled? No. They cascade into a torch? Oh my god, we're getting slow rolled. This is unbelievable. What a savage, savage, savaging. So they have the falter. They cascade into an extra shock. I have one blocker and I, can, I can't I can get it live. This is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, it's only 13. It's only 13. Hold on. So they need, they need, they still need more. So torch on the ceratops. Torch on the ceratops. Attack all. But if these are these are either one or two damage. So yeah, I believe this is exactly thirteen. I mean, I think this hurts terrible. You know, like so I stand by that. This card's awful. Obviously, you can steal games with it, but you know. So Sakas thingy. Shoot me. Sack a thingy. Shoot me. Block and go to one. <sighs> that was close, folks. I have been pretty damn sad if we uh, if we lost that game. Oh boy. Alright. Um book the win up to five. All right, uh, on the play with a, uh, what is that? Oh, hey, hey, hey. No, no, no. What? This is not for you, Karn. Karn's chewing on, what is this? Yeah. What are you doing, Karn? Maybe, maybe you need him. That's not for you. Lots of dinosaurs. Anyway, all right. Distractions. Um, they double shocked the blocker. Oh, yeah, you're right. That was Miss Lethal last game. If they kill the blocker, no, because that's only three. It, they, had, they would have had... Yeah, it was, it was so short. Never mind. All right, anyway. Uh, and it's a little sketchy here, but I think we're fine. We have Thoughtseize, good blocker, and then a lot of good stuff going on also. Yeah, we're going to keep this. Thoughtseize, it goes a long way here. Thoughtseize plus good blocker is fine. I'll draw some lands. We're good. We're good. Five and two. Rocket and roll. And Bronson Mythic. Oh, no. An aggro draw. Goblin Tomb Raider. All right, so we're going to Visage of Dread. Fire up with Thoughtseize. And they've got a Hotfoot Gnome, a Dino Tomaton, an Ancestor's Aid. Plus two, plus zero, oh, first strike, make a treasure. Good to, good to know about that one, obviously. So, our deck has a ton of dead weights and stuff in it. Um, I have a Nautilus also. We should take Dino Tomaton here. Take a Dino, and there you go. A little Goblin action here. Is it Monday? Damn, that's aggressive. Damn, just gotta jam the ancestors' aid on turn. Th like on turn. I guess they, they once I know I, once I know they have it, it's a little worse. They get to get it for a bunch here, but that's aggressive. All right, play land, and we can scout or nautilus. Um, we're gonna nautilus here. We should, we should, we should have a safe block. We could scout. It's kind of like a win-win. If we scout hit a land, it's a win. If we hit, if we don't hit a land, it's also a win. Eh, we just scout actually. Try to find the land for turn four. Let's just scout. Hit the scout. We see the Soul Cleaver. Oh, we're going to ship this. Soul Cleaver's been kind of clunky. If it, if, it, if it costs two to play and one to equip, I'd be a lot more impressed with it. But we got our two Themer Folk. It's a man life, a man, mate. They have Pirate. Do what you want, because a pirate is free. You are a pirate. And they have the, the Gnome. I guess the Gnome makes means maybe playing the Nautilus is better. But we really want to draw land there, so I don't know. 
Alright, so here's the jam. We're gonna block. Pretty easy block there, I think. And we draw a land. Thank you. So, we draw a land. We have Revenant. And we have the Mycoid. I think I want a Mycoid first. I'm definitely gonna be milling cards of this. I think we're, we're, we're taking six. So, let's just Mycoid first. Mycoid first. There you go. We are known. Hope for no kill spell or big creature here, I guess. All right, they have a pathfinding axe draw. Can explore. They have to explore. They find disturbed slumber. A land becomes a four-four. Must be blocked. That's actually pretty good against our board. Kind of this card's kind of meh, but all right, we draw a land also. So we can revenant. They have a five-four now. Damn. All right, so we're gonna revenant. Yeah. Uh, try to find Deadweight, I guess. So let's go... Always looking for Deadweight, every time. Here's a Revenant. We see... that. De 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 oh, there it is! Oh There's God. also a Promising Vein, which is really awkward because, like, we want to find the green for Tyrant. I don't particularly want to take six here, though. Um, so we get to go Swamp, Deadweight, the Tomb Raider. Man, this is, this is a little tough here, actually. Uh, do we keep the land? We just, we just draw two cards here. So we're going to deadweight the Tomb Raider. And then we have a good we have good blocks on the Axe Draw. This thing can force a block and kill a land. Am I, am I a coward or am I a warrior? I don't know. What do you think, chat? Coward or warrior? What should I be? Should I be a coward or a warrior? Let me know in chat. Help me out here. I think I want to be a warrior. Our blocks are pretty good. Uh, we have two four fours in play. Yeah, I'm a warrior. Uh, I'm a warrior. Let's go. Dead weight. Kill this. Trigger this thing, and we'll just say go. I'm gonna leave blockers black for sure. Back for sure. So they have this uh, the slumber. They can make a land to a four four, and it has to be blocked. So like they can attack for a decent amount. They're gonna twist in turns. Ah, uh, shake it up, baby, now. They're going to. Uh, Explore. They're gonna explore and they hit a land. Thank God. They, 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 they hit a spell there. It was really bad for us. Yeah, that, that was actually like the entire game right there on that explore. If they hit a spell, this is a five, six five. We're probably just dead. Fire up the land. Double attack. Double block. No, just single attack. Must be blocked. Now we're still a turn off of the promising bane coming online. This thing is to send eight. Eight's a lot. Um, we have to block, obviously. There's no choice. What card would we rather have in play? I guess the mic would, because it makes the micro tire better. You gotta block here. This card, Descent Eight, might as well be a million. You know? So, like, it's not, it's not gonna be much for a long time. I guess I block here, it's four. So, this is Descent Four. I'm around four. The land's five. Nautilus is maybe sick. Yeah, it's still pretty far away. Yeah, I'm gonna block the Revenant. Keep the Mike and play. All right, so block here. And now, like, we draw their land. Sure. So now we have Nautilus. This thing could also, we could also flip our Visage of Dread, just right now, uh, and make a five four menace and mill two, which is pretty good. And then we get to descend again. We lose a turn of getting our green source. What's this card do? This card just says. Seven more, seven or more lands transform this. They only have five. It's fine. The problem is that the axe draw attacks. You probably need to block them with the mycoid anyway. Yeah, I think we're just gonna flip this thing. Just craft. We can build anything. And now the question is, do I want to leave a fungus in play or exile two cards in the graveyard? Uh. All right, I guess. Sure. Uh, final boss. Da, 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 da. All right, here we go. Six and two. Let's go, folks. Go for that big win. Puzzle door, promising vein. Hands great. Keep door on one. Scout on two. Try to find a swamp later. Favorite Beatles album? Um, Rubber Soul. Rubber Soul. Baby, you can drive my car. Yes, I'm gonna be a star. 
That's the YouTube comment of the day, folks. Favorite Beatles album. In chat, you can keep chiming on there also if you want to. Draw land. It's fine. Ooh, good deadweight target. Oh, no. We drew a Preacher of the Schism. Want to get that bad boy up there as soon as possible, I think. Yeah. We could Promising Vein and Deadweight here. Killing the Frog is pretty good. Um, nah, I'm going to play this thing. It's attack for one. Play for Preacher. Getting Preacher online is super sweet. But I can show you a better time. Wait, you went to the Raiders-Jets game and expected a good game? Come on. Let's get real here. All right. Here's Swamp. Nice lands, too. No! When's my guy ever going to live, you know? I just want to live. I just want to live. All right. So we're going to Promising Vein for a forest. Deadweight this thing. So I guess we're going to Puzzle Door also here. So, sure. Let's do it now, see what happens. We find a chupacabra. Alright, it's a good chupacabra for us. Alright, dead weight here. We have a, we're, we're descending really hard, so chupacabra's gonna kill something pretty nice. We're a little out of like stuff to do, but we have like good removal spell, good removal spell. It's pretty good. Death cap marionette. Alright. Mill two. And they find. They're not gonna mill? Folks. Folks, 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 folks. One of the most common, common uh, inexperienced player-isms is being scared of milling cards. Milling cards is always an upside until you have zero cards in your library. You'd always rather have cards in your graveyard. Even if you have zero cards in your entire deck that care about milling, because it's still just information, right? Even if you mill your good cards, now you know that card's not there, you know a better idea what you're going to draw. Imagine those cards are still on the bottom of your deck, you know? There's, there's almost never a reason not to mill. But people think they're losing their cards, so they kind of get, like, iffy about it. But, yeah. Oh, boy. Wrath, reset. Thanks so much. All right. We're going to um, we're gonna Visage here. It's kind of mana inefficient. Uh, but, like, nothing good to Chupacabra. Nothing good to Ray of Ruin. Nothing else to do. So, always mill, folks. Always mill. But what if I mill my best card? What if it's on the bottom of your library? Would you rather know you didn't have it? You know, that kind of thing. So, the only caveat being if you know you're going to play a really, really long game. But, oh my god. They got rares for days. You got Batman here. Deepest, this card's busted. Um, oh, it's funny because like, we actually have an exile effect in our hand, right? So, like, they just cast this, we just exile. It's kind of fine. And they have Bitter Triumph and Souls of the Lost. Also fine, too. Yeah, this is a pretty good spot. So... Take the Deepest Betrayal. Bat Gods. All, all the gods are pretty insane and limited. They die, turn to a lamb, which come back. But yeah, so. And then, uh, I guess we'll attack for one. Sure. Yes, Chad has got it. That's good. I'm glad to see that. You are just as likely to mill yourself to your bomb rare than you are to mill your bomb rare. They're all just random cards. Detach yourself from the emotional aspect of the game and make the right play. Yeah, they, have, they actually have Souls of Lost and didn't mill. Yeah, it's kind of weird, so. They draw a Colossodactyl, sure. We just have Chupacabra. El Chupacabra. Eat this bad boy. Get out of here. Get off my plane. Hear me and descend. Alright, so. They have Bitter Triumph and Souls of the Lost. Triumph is kind of a weird rule spell. You know, but they're gonna kill my Chupacabra. Yeah. So our opponent, this is a this is a very, very clear bronze game. Our opponent is just like. You know, maybe they're through the game, whatever it is, but, you know. You talk a land for this card? I didn't know that. Alright, so we draw a Promising Vein. I'm just going to sacrifice. Let's actually crack the vein. Actually, let's, let's hold the vein for later descent, right? Let's just cast this thing. Exile this. Scry one. Keep Chupacabra. Love it. AR says, I'll be honest, I hate milling myself for the reason I feel that it's always my rares that get milled, especially unlimited. Don't be emotional about your games, folks. If you want to get better at magic, you gotta take the emotion out of the equation. You know, because you're when you let your emotions go, kind of get and kind of guide your game, you're gonna remember all the times you milled your bomb rare and forget all the times you milled two two, two lands and drew your bomb rare. You know, it's just the same thing. It's so it's math, folks. You gotta be emotionless about it. All right, let's fire up our our visage of dread here. We're going to craft ourselves off of these two guys. Just do a little crafties. Our craft is appreciated. 
and uh, mill over some stuff and say go. So we now have a uh, descent at seven. Join the dead. Leave my guys alone, you know. Oh man, ancestral runners here too. That's gas. All right, so a sift and discard a land and just play our Nautilus. This card slaps. The Nautilus. This card's great. Just like great early defensive creature, but also just slaps for four in the late game. Love it. All right, so they play an Earthshaker Demo. Insanely good card, but only if you have dinosaurs to play, obviously. So. Uh, I'm just going to chew a copper this. Uh, yeah, just Chupacabra this. We have nine, nine Fathomless Descent. F's in chat for Colossal Dreadmaw, huh? Fifteen cards in our deck. Just attack for four rather than play the Gnome here. Four's a lot. You know, seven next turn. I mean, seven next turn, play a Flyer. Card's busted. Like, this is like the card you want to open for the Dinosaur deck. They're going to deadweight my guy? Sure. All right, so play the Echo. Let's actually not tap the uh, green. Why does it want to tap the green so bad? Draw card. Dead weight, sure. What do I think of the Echo? I think it's fine. I think it's not a great card, but it's very serviceable. Uh, if you're descending well, you need a good, need a good grindy card. It fits to the bill for sure. They're going to play Aquali the Seething Tower. And we draw a Gore Stalker. Um, trample. Pretty big idiot. Why am I not popping the vein? Why pop the vein? Remember, folks, try and ask me the question in the framework of, I think you should do this because of this, not just why I didn't do it. Let me know what you think, and I'll let you know what I think. It makes things a little easier as far as having a discourse back and forth. Um... Yeah, I mean, like, we just attack for three in the air here, I guess. Could, like, do some deadweight stuff for some Gore Stalker stuff. It's not really worth it, honestly. Play this thing. We could, like, play this thing and, like, play Gore Stalker and just sack the Gnome and the Nautilus, but it's not really necessary, honestly. I'll just say go. This is fine. Why sit down? So the big reason is that we can descend later with our Bane. There's no reason to do it now because, like, why do it now? Basically, you know, like, is the question. Uh, and then, uh, oh man, oh, we got lunch coming too. All right, I'm sitting back down. I'll get up after, after lunch. Uh, they're gonna, they're gonna explore. And then we have the Gore Stalker here for this turn. Oh, we, we can just sack the Gore Stalker and kill them, right? I, I can just kill them. Yeah, whatever. Sure, it's fine. You can sack Gore Stalker to itself, which is like pretty non intuitive. It's a 6 6, obviously, but when you have lethal, you might as well just do that. So, uh, 4 2. So we play this, sacrifice the Gore Stalker and the Compass Gnome. They sacrifice two, and there's dead. Cool. Works for me. So, there we go. After it was all over, we took us in the house to serve pancakes. Or grilled cheese and tater tots, because apparently I'm 12 years old. Moving on up, folks. Seven wins. Hit the button. Hit the button. What? Boom. Seventh win. We got it. Let's go. All right, so pretty sweet. Seven wins. Uh, I liked our deck, actually. I don't think it was perfect, uh, but it was doing a lot of good things that I feel like kind of what, what this uh, this blue-black sort of descend deck wants to do. A lot of great enablers, right? I mean, triple dead weight, double puzzle door. You saw how often we were descending for like, you know, eight or more. Soul Claim wasn't very good in this deck. I think this card's kind of mopey, uh, unless you're like really, really sacrificing hard. Uh, that being said, um, you know, we got... Nautilus was great. Scout was great. Pretty pretty low curve. Never got our Preacher online, unfortunately. Uh, but we got Microtar online a number of times. A super cool splash, honestly, which is great. The one Sif was great in this deck as a way to trigger uh, Revolt. Not Revolt. Uh, Descend, but also just card advantage. Um, deck was sweet. Liked it a lot. Seven wins. Let's go. So, episode three is coming up. Episode two is in the books. Like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Appreciate it, folks. Let's go.